Okay. Oh, sir, it was our Pentagon that set up the U.N., and they would use uh, McCarthy to take people's rights. But when he figured out that our elite and our own government and our own Pentagon was funding the communists, that's when they destroyed him. But now it's all been declassified. It was all true. Yes, the mega robber barons wanted to destroy freedom, and they used America as the command base to do it while funding the communists so that they could be the other side of it to create the illusion of choice. You bet. And the other historical fact, a little bit before your time, uh, Ronald Reagan came in, and it was a race to the bomb. That's what got me arrested 32 years ago, uh, it, what was going on. Deregulation, and they were going to ship industry offshore at taxpayers' expense on top of it. And what that ended up being, like today, is a hush money situation because they're going to build up all these other countries that's over there so we can go in with our military adventurism and steal their uh, uh, raw goods and everything and uh, at the same time give them plenty of money. That's what we're doing. China is nothing more than hush money uh, so we could do what we're doing and they let us run around without attacking our military. No, that's exactly what globalism is. It's a giant payoff and the elites all then screw the people. Uh, people get into these love affairs with Ronald Reagan. And I've studied Ronald Reagan in depth. He wasn't a bad person individually, but he was in over his depth. I mean, they would roll him up to the podium with his cue cards, and that was it. George Herbert Walker Bush was running things from behind the scenes. And Reagan, when he was actually running, criticized George Herbert Walker Bush and said he's a trilateralist, he's a New World Order person. We have those clips, by the way, in the film Invisible Empire that I produced that Jason Burmes directed that is available at infowars.com if you'd like to uh, to get that film and also support us. But, you know, I always get lectured by so-called conservatives. They're like, oh, NAFTA and GATT are great. Oh, open borders are great. Oh, uh, th th this makes us more competitive. Really, to give General Motors 25-plus billion dollars in the first bailout they got, and they used almost all of it to move plants to Brazil, China, and Eastern Europe. I mean, that all happened. How is giving $16 trillion, another $10 trillion on top of that to the Federal Reserve, and then they get caught lying and saying, we didn't give any of it to private individuals or, or foreign banks. Turns out most of it, 60-plus percent went to it, including MSNBC, your tax money. From the government to the private Federal Reserve to have Rachel Maddow sit up there and talk about banning our Second Amendment. I mean, it's treason. It's a bunch of foreign corporations that wrap their tyranny in a flag. And, and here's an example. USA Today. I mean, this stuff's just in the open now. GM deal moves electric car development to China. A shakedown. I mean, even USA Today sounds like my show. Because that's what it is. And there goes your tax money that you paid for. No one will buy these electric cars. They sold like 10,000 or something last time I checked. They said they were going to sell millions of them. And it's all going overseas. I mean, as if we can't compete with Chinese slave labor and and them chaining their kids while they're going into work to power poles because they won't pay them enough to even live in many areas. This is on record. Guys, type in Chinese workers uh, chaining children to lamp post. It, it, it'll, it'll pull up news articles on it. People won't believe that. It's like selling political dissidents organs. This is the race to the bottom. You don't build up China and build up the rest of the world by having the lowest standards ever known. You suck everything down with it, as Ross Perot explained. Let me explain how it works. Canadian workers were paid on average about $10 an hour more than we were. As soon as they got rid of any type of tariffs or controls, their jobs moved to the United States. Now, we open this up to Mexico. Two things are going to happen. The workers are going to come up here and drive down the wages, but even more, they're going to go to Mexico and drive them down. You're going to have a giant sucking sound, but that's only for a while. Then what's going to happen is... You're going to have the jobs go to India and to China. Mexico is going to be destroyed by this. All the people down there, the farmers that are sustainable, have a good way of life. This is going to destroy Mexico. 
There's 15 million people right now in Mexico City. I predict within a decade, it'll be 30 million being forced up there to work in factories and then coming to the United States and being given welfare. This will destroy the entire global system. But in the short term, it'll allow major corporations to have larger profits. It is not free or fair trade to allow China to have no environmental standards, no workers' compensation, no social security, and to pay tax incentives to move American jobs over there. This country is going to be completely destroyed economically. Now, that's the facts. Al Gore starts laughing at him on Larry King Live. We have clips of that in Fall of the Republic. And he goes, ha, oh, very funny. This will double our jobs, Larry. I mean, that Nelly con artist. And Ross Perot's getting madder and madder because you can say what you want about Ross Perot. He was right on those subjects and cared about this country. Then they called him a conspiracy theorist when he came out and said, I've been told my wife and daughters will be killed. That's fine. This country's in a lot of trouble. I'm dropping out. They're like, oh, that's ridiculous. George Herbert Walker Bush wouldn't threaten him. I mean, stop being naive. The people that run our government and our country do not care about us. Now, Roberts is going to be on for one segment. And I'll get to your calls ahead of the next guest in that little segment and the one after it. I'll get to Jason, George, Brian, Carter, Mike, and others. We're going to hit economic news, world military news, police state news with Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Straight ahead, I'm Alex Jones. The websites are Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. We're carrying the new film, A Noble Lie, exposing Oklahoma City as a staged op and a new... Well, I'll tell you about it when we come back. We're on the mark. I've gotten a few calls about this, and uh, I know that uh, Jesse Ventura has already left the United States. But I'm going to try to get a hold of him in Mexico and find out about this because I'm here reading about this uh, even on the Blaze website. Uh, that's just one of the many places that's uh, running with it. And even the people commenting there say, this guy's selling a book. Uh, this sounds really weird. Uh, it comes off strange. Uh, the, the Opie and Anthony show, a show I've been a guest on before. I'd have them as a guest here, but they, they cuss so much. We're on FCC stations. They're just on XM. Uh, this uh, younger Navy SEAL, uh, Chris Kyle, says that uh, he was at a bar uh, and uh, that Jesse Ventura was there talking about how the war is a bunch of murderers and wrong. So he punched him in the nose and ran away so the police wouldn't arrest him. And he's acting like it's kind of joking around. Um, very, very strange. And, and, and separately... Jesse, you know, called two weeks ago and said, hey, they're running a national news story on Fox and TMZ that I was, the police pulled me over for rubbernecking for tailgating in California. And by the way, he, you know, this is supposedly the night before he calls from Minnesota. He goes, you know, I've been in a federal lawsuit. I haven't flown in 15 months. And later TMZ had to retract it. So they said he's, the police pull him over. He's tailgating people. And now it looks like a psyop. Now he's in a bar. By the way, Ventura hasn't drunk alcohol in decades. And it's funny. When I was out in Vegas with him, you know, shooting the TV show a few months ago, we were driving around, uh, Jesse and um, his wife and I, and he was talking about baloney in the press. And he's like, yeah, the, they're always putting out these stories that I was in a bar in California or a bar in Nevada and I got knocked out. And he goes, it's weird. He goes, Alex, do you think, Alex, do you think that's a psyop? And then, of course, he called into the show for and he goes, Alex, I'm very angry. I may have to sue them. I was not in California. I have proof I'm here. I, uh, they say I did this. And now they've got this, this, this currently, I guess, active, you he just got out, uh, sniper. So I guess he's been over there shooting Iraqis. Uh, and it's, it's so manly and tough, you know, the disheveled, starving people. Uh, and, and, and he's all laughing and joking on this show about punching Ventura in the nose because Ventura's saying the war's wrong, and then running away. I mean, very bizarre. So people are asking me about it. I, I've got Ventura's wife's cell phone, but I think he's already gone into Mexico. I'm going to call him at the end of the show today, okay? And I'm going to find out about this. But if I put two and two together, I think he told me about this and was going, I just ought to sue these people. But that was before this was ever out. 
And he will sue people So I, if it's not true. So I'm going to find out what's going on. But there's a clear psyop going on. Ron Paul, that's on CNN, will he apologize for a Twitter sent from his account? And the Twitter's like, yeah, Huntsman's an idiot. And Paul's like, no, somebody unauthorized sent that. And since he apologized, that like it's a big deal. Oh, my gosh, they sent a Twitter out. Uh, Ron Paul, you know, ate a hamburger once or he got a crooked toenail. I mean, it, it, it's just as much ado about nothing, psyops, and we're going to look into it. Uh, but even the people on Glenn Beck's side are not buying it. And that's just one of the places Dallas newspapers have got it. D Magazine's got it. Uh, and uh, we'll... Uh, Look into it and, and give me the breaking intel on that front. Uh, up at DrudgeReport.com, they have our article, DHS officers armed with semi-automatic set up unannounced ID checkpoint. Oh, by the way, again, Ventura doesn't drink. And that was a story about, I don't even drink. I'm at a bar. I'm knocked out. I, I Who are these people? Uh, I think it's a psyop. But uh, DHS officers armed with semi-automatic set up unannounced ID checkpoint. Uh, in Florida, I mean, w w with machine guns. So we'll be looking at that after Dr. Roberts leaves us. Uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts is a best-selling author, former editor at the Wall Street Journal. He has a new great website they've launched, paulcraigroberts.org. He was the head of policy uh, at Treasury, number two position under Ronald Reagan, and is the father of Reaganomics, and he's um, recognized as one of the top ten economists out there. We won't go over all of his uh, laurels and international awards and national awards he's gotten, but he joins us briefly uh, for the rest of the hour uh, to break down all the incredible things uh, that are happening. The Iran buildup, uh, the NDAA, the police state, uh, the, the Obama power grabs with, with, with recess appointments. Uh, what's number one on your radar screen right now, Dr. Roberts? Uh, well, uh, Alex, you know, it's the, the murder, the public murder of the United States Constitution in full public view by both parties in Congress, both houses, and by the president. And this is an amazing thing. When they publicly repeal the Constitution and the Bill of Rights in a piece of legislation that has no justification whatsoever. You know, you could understand something like that, Alex, if uh, every day a half a dozen uh, shopping malls were blowing up, if if people standing in the air lot, in, in the uh, airports waiting to clear airport security, if, if bombs were going off in the lines, if, if terrorists were running in and spraying the crowd with automatic weapons, you know, if the neocons were being assassinated in their homes, uh, if, if all of this was happening, one could understand these kinds of really uh, desperate measures. But when nothing whatsoever is happening, Despite the fact the United States has been bombing and murdering uh, Muslims in six or more countries for the last 10 years, there hasn't been a single domestic act of terrorism in the United States uh, since 9-11. And you and I know what we think about that event. So the whole thing, you see, has no justification. And people just sit there and they've accepted the public murder of the United States Constitution. What does this mean? You know, the Constitution is the result of about 800 years of struggle. We inherited it from the British. You know, the, the Bill of Rights, this was something they achieved over a long period of time of struggle. We inherited it. We enshrined it in the Constitution so that there would be limits on the government and so the government would be accountable to law and could not just arbitrarily uh, do things to people. Well, we've just allowed them to destroy this. And there's no objection. We, of all the candidates, all the visible candidates, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, contending for the presidency, only Ron Paul has made an issue of this. What does this mean about us as a country? So if we're going to let them murder the Constitution, then sure, we're going to let uh, <clears throat> the Department of Homeland Security feel us up uh, when we go through airports, porno scanners, uh, post armed guards, at social security offices, stop cars and trucks on the nation's highways and search them without 